How's it going, everyone? Welcome, as always, to the Down to Time Gaming Podcast. This is your number one podcast destination every other week for the news, reviews, and more than the worlds of the board games, the video games, and everything else fun you can do in your hard uh, downtime. Now, we've got a lot of cool stuff to discuss this week, a rapid fire of games we played, and some small bits of news. But before all that, let's get started. As always, I'm the host, welcome to the show. Hello, my name is Sam. Across the air, my name is co-host with the mo-host it's chris <laughs> how's it going dude? hello there hello. <laughs> maybe if we both did november it'd be co-host with the mo-stash no that's a bug no nope. terrible <laughs> <laughs> retract 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 the joke oh. did not land <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's good man it's good like, yeah. It's co- yeah yeah it's actually pretty good uh, did some fireworks haven't done Ooh. fireworks in like a decade and actually it was a really good display you know. As in, you went to a professional one, or you did like did them in your garden? <laughs> uh, I'm still alive, so I went to a professional display. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. the only acceptable place for fireworks. But it was one of those. I actually did it all to the tune of the music, and it was this proper yeah. eclectic mix of songs, like from Smooth Criminal to Poison Ballast <laughs> Cooper, through to Highway to Hell. I was like, actually, this is pretty fucking banging. It's cool. Yeah, yeah I've not been to one in a long time. I, I, I kind of dismiss them because I'm like, oh, it's fireworks. I've seen, been there, done that, you know. Yeah. What what innovations are there in sky explosions? Surely. Uh, the drainage. That's the only difference these oh, days. Oh yeah, yeah. The drones are like mental. Yeah. But I doubt like a small town UK place had many drone shit going on today. No, we had some drones flying around recording, but not actually any like. Yeah. Not like the ones you see in Korea and Japan, which are like uh-huh. fucking Pokemon in the sky, like full 3D shit. No, they, they had a bonfire as well, mate. Now, that was fucking disappointing. Very. <laughs> it's like you've got a bonfire, and I'm like, light it from the middle, and they lit it from one side, and after an hour and a half, it still hadn't caught to the other side. I was yeah. like, this is the most desperate bonfire I've ever seen. I guess the price of petrol is up, so. <laughs> Skimping. Give back in the day ch- that you, back in the day, you, these, these things used to just explode <laughs> with petrol and kerosene. It was fucking, all it was was smoke and a really mediocre fire. I was like, mate, that was before the fireworks. So I was convinced the fireworks were going to be this really cheap affair. Yeah. Like maybe like a Catherine wheel going off, you know, that was... That was it. Yeah. Well, oh, good stuff. Yeah. What's going on on your end, man? Now then, it was um, birthday weekend, which is good. Um, you know, uh, my my wife's uh, father, mother and sister all have their birthdays on the same weekend of the year, which is very convenient. Um because not that you want to get these things out of the way, but having them all at once means you never forget them. And it's like only takes up one one of my weekends in the whole year. Um, but yeah, that was good. See the family. Had a, did a roast, did a beef and pork, big old roast for like 10 of us. So that was good. I mean, was sounds, pretty, really? sounds pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, it sounds pretty good. Good yeah. song. That was Halloween. Halloween was middle. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Shouldn't really it, be a thing here. It's, it's Halloween. Whole, yeah. Yeah. This whole massive, like, obviously pushed by supermarkets and corporates to be more American because they want to sell more stuff is very annoying and has like obviously ramped up in the last few years as they're just trying to sell shit earlier and earlier and earlier. And it's very annoying. Um, I saw so, my yeah. first Christmas advert today. Yeah, you're right. Oh, Literally. Yeah, we saw some a while ago. I mean, so. yeah, but I don't really do much daytime TV and my cookies are probably like, this guy doesn't celebrate Christmas. He's probably a cat. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cookies are like, whoa, no, don't send him any holidays, though. <laughs> he just ended up killing himself. He's only here for Christmas cheer. <laughs> he just wants discount codes on flashlights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know what you're getting for Christmas. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> Secondhand. Anyways. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, with that grim news, let's move into better news. Um Lots of developments, lots of interesting things going on. We're, we're skipping things, skipped quite a lot. The whole um, Bayonetta 3 voice actor stuff, skipped all that. Most mm-hmm. of the uh, Microsoft, Sony ongoing. I think I have to mention this every two weeks because constantly things happen and it will turn, uh, it, it, in about six minutes of me talking about it, it just turns into just ranting about how fucking awful Sony are. I um, can't do that every week. Um, there is one thing there, though. I was going to do that second. Might as well do it now. Uh, Microsoft today in fact, have said uh, they will keep Call of Duty on Sony platforms, quote, as long as there's a PlayStation out there to ship to, which is both reassuring yeah. and also like a thinly veiled, yeah, enjoy it while you can. <laughs> We're going to run you out of business. Um, it wasn't that. But he, Phil Spencer just came out and said, like, look, it makes sense. 
to, for yeah. us to put a game, the most popular game franchise in the world, on your console where people will give us 70 bucks for it. Like, it, it's, it's, that's it. It's simple. <laughs> you mean we can still make money? It's just, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's Why a would we make ex- less it's a acquisition. Money? You want to make your money back. Yeah. Why yeah. would we want to make less money? Um, it's too big of a property to, to keep unique and um, exclusive, sorry. It'll be the same as when eventually EA sell up because uh, FIFA will have to be all platforms. There's no other way about it. Yeah, FIFA is all platforms. Yeah, but if EA will sell eventually, like if, if the consolidation of the market, okay, this is my theory. If the consolidation of the market keeps coming, someone will buy EA eventually. Yeah, I whether think that's they're... like ten cent or whether that's like Sony, Microsoft, like you know, someone's going to buy them. I would say I think they're borderline too big to be bought because FIFA and Madden like raking absolute billions. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you probably would have said that about Activision a couple of years ago, so it wouldn't be well, it wouldn't be Sony. It'll be Tencent or Microsoft or Disney, yeah. like something oh, like that. Oh, Disney, Disney pivoting into games, just yeah. picking up EA would. Or Amazon. EA oh, Amazon, who've tried and failed. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 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 It, won't, it won't be Google, will it? <laughs> no, the five yearly cycle of hey, let's get into games, and then they cock it all up, and then hey, let's get out of games again. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't. I think EA are pretty safe, to be honest. Activision, yep, and uh, Ubisoft will probably get bought at some point. I think CD Projekt Red does well at some point. Yeah. They seem to do quite well with the anyone with a storefront, basically. Like them and Epic and Steam obviously make loads of money. Um, well, that's the thing because CD Projekt Red own GOG, which I always forget they own that. Yeah. So I don't know how well it does. Probably not amazingly, but it's free money ticking in once you build the stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, for old games, and it's like, all right, let the community do the hard work. We just Why make not? money. Yeah. Talking of old games, um, fabled uh, health insurance provider and pachinko machine maker Konami is getting into video games. <gasps> and uh, after a, like a 10 year absence of not releasing anything, do you want seven Silent Hill games? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, I, do, I mean, it's yay. If you're a fan of Silent Hill, great. There's a lot of Silent Hill. This is so weird. Like, like they've only made like Pez and that one really bad Metal Gear since MGS5, which is yeah, about 10 years ago. Yep. And all of a sudden, here's like everything we're working. So they're, they're a bit, bit more of a publisher now. Like almost everything is working with other teams or families out to other developers. And then they're just going to publish them um, and slap Silent Hill on it. Uh, there was that tray uh, announcement stream thingy, um, which I guess fans of Silent Hill will be happy with. First thing announced, Silent Hill 2 remake made by Bloober. Mid. Mid. Yeah. Mid. <laughs> Silent Hill 2 is a great game that people love. And the Bloober team are uh, divisively average. They really should have got on top of this with the RE2 remake. That would have been the time to proper cash in. Yep. This kind of feels like they reacted to that, which but that's was using... that about two, yeah. three years ago now when they uh, announced it. Yeah. Maybe it has. Yeah. Maybe they've been working on it this entire time. But um, yeah, Bloober team, like obviously makers of the medium. Um, and layers of fear, which are uh, yeah. the medium was okay. Yeah, it it was more interesting thinking about it than it was playing it. Yeah, and even then, when you think about it, it's some of the themes are a bit. I meant not after playing it before it Terrible. came out. Before yeah, it came yeah. out, it was super exciting, and then it just <laughs> went. Was that a twenty two release medium? Uh, no, January twenty one, long time ago. Oh fuck me! All right, yeah, yeah, Get, getting old. Yeah, uh, yeah. So average people are like meh. Because Silent Hill is obviously the most the the most important and famous one that people love, um, and yeah, it probably would have been better if going to a better developer. Um, then Silent Hill Townfall, that's with the T, Townfall, developed by Stories Untold and Observation Maker No Code, alongside Annapurna. That is all we know, <laughs> literally just the name. Um, then a new Silent Hill movie called Return to Silent Hill. There was a, there was a terrible two thousand six Silent Hill movie. Uh, and they, the, the same director is coming back to do this one. So cool. If Silent cool. Hill extended universe uh, casting <laughs> is still in the works. So this one is a long, a long way out. Uh, then a new game, Silent Hill Ascension, is described as a live, real-time interactive series in which players watch together as the story plays out. You can change outcomes and be part of the scenes. So, like as dusk falls or yeah, until dawn. Yeah, like that sort of basically game, yeah. Yeah, story-based, um, yeah. 
Dark Chronicles, whatever they're called. That's I mean, maybe stuff. just play Until Dawn for now, if that's exciting. Until Dawn's really good. I know so, it yes, is. It's really good. Instead. And the sequel they did as well, uh, The Quarry, I think it was. Uh, there's loads. The, the, there's that whole uh, anthology series, um, Man of Medan. Uh, the Quarry is the most recent one. There was. There's a whole bunch. I mean, uh, uh, honestly, that's not the worst. Like, it's, it's shown to work if it's been done well. So actually, I don't hate the idea of them doing that. No. Uh, what was it? The Dark Pictures Anthology. That was it. Oh, that was it. Yeah. yeah. Man of Medan, Little Hope, House of Ashes, The Devil in Me, and then uh technically the quarry isn't one of those ones it's not an anthology title uh but yeah they're good they're, they're interesting mm. to go. Uh, and then finally can i announced uh silent hill f it's a, the little like the musical note f um a brand new silent hill game finally uh set in the 1960s japan which is uh interesting and it's written by like a famous japanese visual novel specialist ryukishi 07 apparently okay and, that's pretty cool people seem genuinely excited about this one so I mean, new. It's the only new thing, really. Um, Ascension and that other weird game. So one, two, three, four. So five Silent Hill things all announced at once. There you go. Get your Silent Hill in. I think Ben is having his best life right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As he pivots to becoming a horror game content creator. (laughs) (laughs) Why not? Silent Hill 2 is like his favourite game of all time, right? Oh, he's loving Signalis. He's loving that. I, I put him onto oh, it, and now he's already like, you know, knees nice. deep in retro horror. It's yeah, it seems very cool. Yeah. I've not had time to dig into it properly yet, but hopefully <laughs> for next time. Besides, I, I think we've got some board games to be talking about. I think like, that's a way. This is a uh... yes. Do you want me to pivot to that? Uh, have you seen a Kickstarter? What I will say is a Kickstarter for Slay the Spire comes out as of this recording yesterday. Oh man, so, so tomorrow. Yep, yep. <laughs> and uh, I've been chatting to a bunch of people on Reddit about it, and yeah, apparently the people who are under NDA have been saying it's really fucking good, oh, and cool. it captures the feel of the game, and yeah, a little bit hyped. Nice. So there's, for people there's... who like... Hmm? No, carry on. I was just I was going to mention as a PSA, for people who love Slay the Spire, definitely check out the Kickstarter. I can't tell you pricing or anything, obviously, because we're early, No. but it seems pretty fucking cool. I'll probably yeah. end up backing it, to be honest. There's a whole bunch of Kickstarters currently. Oh my god, there's so many Kickstarters, Sam. There's a massive 75mm resin miniatures made by Warhammer YouTuber Squidmar, which is doing really well, despite being unbelievably expensive. Mm -hmm. Uh, The new Canvas, Canvas 3, the finishing touches, is almost 1,000% funded. Yeah. Um, What else have we got? Zoo Tycoon, officially licensed by from Microsoft. Zoo Tycoon. Race to the Raft, the new Frank West game, um, Isle of Cats. Uh, Based. God, there's so many. Cultists of the Old Spirit Earth. Island and uh, Nature yeah, Incarnate yeah. is currently Island. on a game found. Or not a game found, backer kit, whichever one it is. Yeah, oh, there's too many of these things now. Um, so, honestly, like, this is what I was chatting to a guy on Reddit about it because it's a bit of like a board game Kickstarter Christmas. Like, there's so many good games out right now, and I'm just having to pick two or three to back. Otherwise, I'm fucking skint. And yep. won't get to play any of them for another two years. Yeah. Uh, the only other news story I, I pulled actually was Elden Ring. Um, the Elden Ring board game is going to be uh, kickstarted, obviously, by um, our friends at Steamforge Games. Mm-hmm. Um, and they announced the, the they did the first big blog post today, like detailing um, kind of what's going to be involved in it. And uh, it's so big that the core box only includes two of the areas in the game. So Limgrave and the Weeping Peninsula, and then there will be further releases to delve into other areas. Um, so it's, whether it's too big to fit in the box or whether money, 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 expansions, 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 mini, minis, mini, 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 mini. This is going to be like 500 quid all in. You know? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, the Horizon Zero Dawn one, I think that was hundreds. The Monster Hunter one was hundreds in the end. So, yeah. Milk <laughs> that cash cow. Yeah. Uh, they said, quote, we didn't want you to feel like you'd missed large chunks of the game purely because we were trying to fit everything onto the tabletop all at once. We couldn't possibly include every boss, enemy, weapon, and location that you wanted to see. The designer explained, we were also extremely conscious of how attempting to do so would then bloat the project massively into something quite confusing and unmanageable, both for backers and from a logistics perspective. So, I I mean, at, taken at face value, that is actually a pretty good explanation. Like, had they tried to fit it all in one box, people would have been unhappy, like, oh, my favourite sword, oh, I can't make my build, like, oh, why did you leave this, this boss out? Whereas had they done the full, you know, Gloomhaven-esque style thing of everything, 
then it would mm-hmm. have been like 300 quid and no smaller tiers. So it sounds like they're doing smaller box, first few areas, like up to like Godric or something. And then uh, there'll be other boxes and stretch goals with other bits and pieces. I really hope it's good. I don't even want it. I just really hope it's good. Yeah. It'd be so nice to not be sitting there going, ooh, Steamforged and a game like me. <laughs> you know, especially with Ring being as huge as it is. Like, yeah. I really do want them to succeed. Yeah. 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 Hopefully they've learned from the Horizon game. <laughs> oh, yeah. and All those Resident games Evil games, they the dark, pump out year on year. And the Dark Souls game and everything that they've yeah. gone through. So, you know, maybe. All right. That was it. That was our crossover of the day. Uh, let's jump into games to play. We're, trying, we're rushing through a little bit because I think we've got games to talk about, and that is the best thing. Talking about games. Uh, do you want to go first? Mine's very marble heavy. <laughs> Wait, are you going video games or board games? Or are you both. doing a little bit of both? And both. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's all marble. What I'll do then, what I'll do, uh, I will just mention my video game because I've been playing Plague Tale Requiem. Mm-hmm. Real quick, I'm not going to go into it, but. I'm pretty much having a great time with it, actually. Yeah. It had the same oh. problem as the first one, where it's a bit too slow to start. And like the first hour's like, okay, here we go again. Get in there, get warmed up. But actually, now I've started getting to like hour five, hour six. It's a pretty fucking good game. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. Really enjoying it. But yeah, looking looking forward to talking more about Plague Tale Requiem in the future. Like I Pat six. Hey, uh, I, I'm really enjoying where I've got to. Like, I actually, actually really, really enjoying. Like, for my lunch, I ate in like 30 seconds and then played it for half an hour because I wanted to keep seeing what the game was offering. Nice. Are you? Well, 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 um, do you think you need to play and finish the first one before playing this one? Honestly, no. Like, I've read a synopsis beforehand. Like, the game does carry on exactly where it leaves off. And you probably don't get a lot of like the relationship between Hugo and Amicia and why like she's so protective. So you probably do miss out on some of the character arc and character development. Yeah. And a lot of her character arc is kind of like a bit Tomb Raider style. You know, the first Tomb Raider where it's like, you know, a bit fish out of water, having to learn how to do things. This one, it's a bit more like yeah. going a bit, woohoo, you know, I've been traumatized by all the death and the murder. It starts to really back <laughs> to my psyche. Yeah. Which I'm really enjoying the character arc for Misha so far. So I'd say oh, no, because I think they've streamlined a lot of my complaints in the first game. Like, now you don't need to pick up stones anymore. You just have infinite stones. I'm like, great, thank you. <laughs> fucking garbage idea. Finally. Yeah. And like, it's quite quick at introducing, like, different mechanics and getting you back up to speed with all the powers and alchemy you learn. Yep. So. Yeah, it's kind of like having to slowly teach you each new one as it comes through. It's like, oh, here's a fire one. Here's your one that uses salt Peter to put out fire. But on the plus side, the missions are much harder. I'm getting a little Last of Us 2 vibes on this game. Like, I don't know whether they meant for it to be like that, but like the stealth sections. Like, if you try playing Last of Us 2 stealthily, there's these big, huge, amazing levels that you could just explore and do whatever you wanted in. Yeah, and that's where I'm getting those vibes and like the level design when it comes to the encounters. Hmm. But I don't know whether that's just because I don't play that many stealth games, and that was the last big stealth game I played, or whether there's a bit of inspiration there with the whole young female protagonist, big open levels, aggressive or stealth, your choice. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because that's uh, similar to is the first one similar to that at all? I've not played either. So. Not as much. Like I didn't get the vibe from the first one. But this one, I'm getting a lot more. Yeah. I think maybe it's also because your character's a lot more aggressive. They give you more tools to actually play, like the kill everyone approach of Arthur. Then in the first game, killing everyone was never an option. You know, you were basically just a 13 year old girl running away from people. And every now and then you go like sling to the head. <laughs> you know, where well, this one it's like you can kind of actually go a bit more murder happy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, even like that's on the leveling stuff. Okay, I didn't want to go too far, but one well, so the leveling stuff is like when you finish an encounter, depending how you do the encounter, <clears> there's basically like uh free experience bars that level up, but they only level up after you do things in a certain way. So if you're stealthy, it will fill up the stealth bar. If you're going aggressive, mm-hmm. it'll fill up the aggressive bar. If you're taking advantage of like terrain and the surroundings, it will fill up your opportunism bar. So actually you've got three secret levels that you can level up just by your playstyle. Yeah, so, that's cool. Oh, 
it was like it was, leveling up like, in the, the the function that you're actually doing so you don't like oh i'm doing stealth and then on a level up you get like oh you've got like this new shooting ability it's like well that's useless to my mm-hmm. gameplay i guess yeah like funnels you into what you want to do and it just kind of rewards you for playing different styles so i think for completionists you could probably play the game in two very different ways and get two very different experiences yeah but yeah the completionist I'm... like how long to be is almost double the, the game time so yeah, you have to play it twice. <laughs> I, I, I think you will do because achievements are get all of those to maximum. So I'm yeah. guessing it's like you have to be very like change your play style to match. But I'm getting Hitman vibes in that sense. Of actually, if you want to go stealthy, you end up just restarting checkpoints <clears> and like I'm, I can't help it. I fuck up. I restart the checkpoint. Repeat, repeat, repeat until I do it properly. Yeah, but yeah, pretty good game. Pretty good game nice. to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would, I would have plugged in had i like played the first one um i know it's quite story heavy maybe i'll get around to it but then the first one's like 10 hours so maybe i'll just jump into this i'm in that weird patch where what, god of wars in like nine days so some decide if i'm gonna get it yet but i want to start something a bit longer just in case I still yeah it's, it's a really yeah, good yeah. point it's a really good point but then you'll uh, you'll finish this because you like it. Like you'll sit down and play it quite a lot. Yeah. But where I'm like I'm I would be weaving it in between like FIFA and other bits and pieces. Like I, I'm I mean it's only sixteen hours. Like I'd probably finish this in nine days. But you know, I've kind of committed to this game as my only game. Hence yeah. why when you talk about your your game of choice, <laughs> I, I've not got involved for good reason. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's why I was gonna I was looking through the stuff the the things that I downloaded. I was like, oh, I was. Shall I start Yakuza or shall I start Nino Kuni? And it's like, well, they're both like eighty hours. <laughs> it's like I can't. This doesn't fit. Um, one of them will be my Christmas game, probably Nino Kuni. Yeah, we want to play that. Yeah, no, that's fair, man. That's fair. Yeah, cool. Well, more when you finish it, then that's cool. Um, do you want to carry on? Or shall I have the next one? I mean, I think otherwise we're gonna have a Marvel chunk. I, I think we should split the Marvel chunk up. Yeah. So, uh, Marvel physical or Marvel digital? Which go, dig- go digital first. Get the get the digi get the digi through. Get the digis out of the way. So I folded and uh, started mm-hmm. playing Marvel <laughs> Snap. <laughs> The new, uh, the mm-hmm. new hotness, I guess. Um, yeah, I, it, I don't know if we talked about it last time. If I just talked about it, I saw you. Like it was being such so aggressively advertised on Twitter and Reddit and YouTube and basically the internet. And I was like, well, fuck you. I'm not gonna like you're just trying to target this everywhere. Like I don't know why I was very antagonistic against it, just because I was seeing it everywhere. Um, and then I downloaded it, and it's actually really, really good. Too. So uh, it's a phone game. Um, you play it in landscape. Uh, nope portrait so you can play it one-handed um which is important for commuters and stuff like that i guess um but it's just like a super simple um three lane concept um everyone's played the card game air land and sea which me and you played a couple of times and it is really good fun it's essentially the same um you play cards into these three areas and then the cards gain you power and then whoever has the most power in each lane wins that lane and you need to win two of the three lanes to win the game um that is like how you win that is like everything boiled down into that sort of little concept mm-hmm. the differences are uh there's only six rounds each time each round you get one mana so one two three four five six uh cards range from one to six or oh, energy whatever it is so if you're playing on curve you only play six cards or you can put in some like if you put more weaker cards into your deck then on turn five you can play like a two and a three or whatever you know that kind of stuff um each lane you can only play up to four cards so uh, only 12 spots on your side and their side of the board each, which can fill up. If you're playing like a, like a rush deck or a weenie deck, like you can get to a point where you fill up two of the locations and then it's a bit of a mess and that kind of stuff. Um, the interesting thing as well, the locations. So the three locations all have special powers and all do special stuff. It might like minus power from units that are there. They might duplicate units that are there. Or if you feel you're the first person to fill up this location, then you get X power or draw two cards or whatever. Um, the first location is unveiled at the start of the game. The second one at the start of the second turn, the third one at the start of the third turn. Okay. So you, know, like you have to kind of adapt as you go along, uh, which is cool. And it adds randomness because there's so many, so, so, so many locations that add in. Um, and some of them are like really funky. Like, oh, if you fill, if you fill one of them up, then you get to draw a six cost creature, uh, six cost hero that costs you zero. So you basically get one of the strongest cards in the game that costs nothing. <laughs> but to do that, you have to like rush this thing. So like you fill it with like one, two mana things. You're not very strong. Then they've got like the rest of the game to try and, 
you know, if they get above your power level, you can't play cards there anymore. Mm-hmm. So te- they're going to win that lane, but you've got this bomb you can drop so you've for committed zero. almost all your resources to getting just one six creature and giving up a lane by doing so yeah but then yeah. that will cost zero so on your on turn six you can drop a six and a six and hopefully swing the other two lanes um it all marvel all heroes all marvel heroes uh and anti-heroes and that kind of stuff um it also has a cool uh, like back out mechanic which is again similar to air land and z where uh when you win a game you win uh two cubes which is like two ranking points but if you retreat on any turn other than the last turn, you only lose one point instead of losing two. So if you get to the the end of the fifth turn and you think, oh, I'm not going to win this, you can press retreat, you only lose one ranking point. Or you go into the sixth turn and you think, like, oh, no, I've still got a chance. And then it suddenly becomes two ranking points. So then both of you are like battling out for the two points, so you get double. Um, also, the snap mechanic as it's called as it's called marvel snap at any point in the game you can snap and then that means you're confident of winning and then if that turn finishes then the ranking points will double so on turn two i could be like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna win this press snap and then when it goes to turn three suddenly it's up to two ranking points so if you retreat you'd lose two but then it still doubles on the last turn so you get to turn six and then suddenly it's four points and this is win or lose. So it's whoever wins or whoever loses. If you both snap <laughs> during the game and you get to the last turn, then you're fighting for eight points because it's your snap, their snap, mm. and double. And eight points, it takes 10 points to like rank up. It's a massive swing. Uh, but at that point, you're both like super confident because you both snapped and got to the last turn. And then generally, those are the runs where the last turn is just chaos <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> swapping creatures around using like superpowers that like double things up and move things around and just like destroy things it's absolutely crazy all your fucking tricks all your tricks is it all creatures then like all all, all heroes there's not like any spells heroes. equipment or no. anything like that yet it's just no, all heroes no. heroes there are there are only a couple of like vanilla heroes almost everything has either an ongoing power or a reveal power mm-hmm. so you put it in the lane they put one down you don't see where they've put it until you both commit and then all of a sudden they flip over. There's either a reveal effect or an ongoing effect. So it's not like a face down mechanic then. It's all face up, but it just happens that Mm -hmm. takes advantage of being digital and it both does at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, in the tabletop game, you'd both like put your hand out with the face down card. You both flip at the same time, basically. Um, Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So it's kind of managed that way. So there's okay. no uh, what you're getting at. There's no spells, none of that. There's no you play a card and discard it. Like you have to put things into the lanes. So that's why the spaces then matter. Because there's one that like um, she's five cost, only has one power, but she summons a seven power tiger in another lane, which is really powerful. Seven's like good power, but you're filling up a slot in a lane with only something that's one, which is very weak. So you either like commit hard in that lane, then put her there, then the one hopefully won't matter too much, but you can get mm-hmm. the seven somewhere else. Blah blah blah. blah. Um, the interactions are really really fun and interesting and it makes you feel like super smart i know like scott uh, linked us to the article the other day that like the thing the, the tagline on the review is it makes you feel so fucking smart mm-hmm. um and it like literally does like in the ranks with like i'm still at like which is playing seriously for three days you're playing against like app people i guess and uh, yes. if, if you have any sort of like probably board game and yeah, people yeah, with yeah, no yeah. strategic mindset if you yeah. have any sort of board game experience you're just going to trash everyone but you feel so good because it's yeah. like you're an idiot and then i'm really smart <laughs> um but like simple things like a card uh, there's like a, i can't remember her name you put her in the if you put her in the middle middle lane she gains plus two power the amount of people that put her not in the middle lane in one of the other lanes it's like why would you do that Take out your, if you're not going to put it in the middle, take out your deck. And if you're yeah. going to play, it, put it in the middle. Like I understand, like on some edge cases, it might be better having two power somewhere else. But basically, you want to get the most for your energy, so you want to be having it for four power right in the middle. Uh, yeah. So basically, you trounce everyone. The bat has got battle pass, got dailies, got weeklies, got challenges, got a store, got all that kind of stuff. Majority, you play for free. There is aren't there's not really ways to buy cards, which is pretty good. Um, the way that you progress uh, is your collection score. So when you get uh, when you play a game, you get like a set of orbs. Orbs are per card, and then they upgrade the rarity of a card. And all that does is just change the way it looks. So common is like normal, and then it's frame break, and the character kind of like breaks out the edge of the card, and it looks kind of cool. That's uncommon. And the next one is three D, and then animated, and then shiny animated. But, oh, um, like, okay, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. So that it's not pissed new- me off so much of Rune Terror that there's no like unique card arts to 
oh, kind yeah. of enjoy the options you've got. That's the 3D, really cool. Three D ones are really cool because it actually like you tilt your phone and it like moves around like a diorama. Um, but that's like cool. that's the main way you upgrade is not you know I'm not unlocking you know mythic rares or like secret rares and you get it's not like better stronger cards it's making your current cards look better and each time you do that your collection score goes up and every time that hits a odd level like 40, 50, 52 you unlock a new card like an actual new card to use um, the cards are set into like defined pools so the first 100 you unlock in the first 200 levels then the, then you jump into pool 2 and then you get the next 100 cards in the next 200 levels uh, whilst you're in that first pool you won't play anyone with access to the other cards so you're okay, playing that's with, cool. the, you're playing uh, with uh, the that first. means that going from the first pool to the second pool is going to be fucking rough you uh, apparently it's still like you only play people like plus 3 or 4 rank to you as well apparently whilst everyone's playing it games are take less than a second you tap play and you're playing like mm-hmm it's still it's super busy um so i think it's it's only like a thin band people say like yeah when you get to like 214 you start seeing maybe pool two players but like 216 is the first pool two cards you get and that kind of stuff um but it just means like all the cards are free there's no way to bum rush it you can't really buy cards uh you can buy cosmetics uh you can buy like you can upgrade you can upgrade cards in the store but only three per day before they refresh so there's no real way to like rush that um and the only other cards are on the season pass. I think you get like three on the premium pass, which is nine pounds currently. Um, it runs for a month. It's finishing next week. It's a Spider Man cent- uh Miles Morales Spider Man centered pass. Um, it doesn't allow there's any way to pay for that using any resources. So that's the one thing you kind of have to pay for. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you get a certain amount of gold. I think is you probably get like six, seven, eight, nine pounds like worth of gold. But then the next pass you won't be able to spend gold on, so it's you know it's it's weird. You kind of have to pay money. There's no like ongoing finish pass, get next pass thing. Um, and they aim to do then, one. A, they aim to do one a month. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty aggressive battle pass schedule if they're doing one a month. I was expecting it to be like once every two months, but yep, yep. Why well, don't? Uh, yes, it's entering week five, so this one is a five week thing. I don't okay. know how long they're gonna be. Um, yeah, because like, uh, I mean, Marvel has got the characters, has got the IP, it's got the history. Yeah. In theory, you could do one a month, and I think it's got the fan base that would pay for that once a month. To be honest, so yeah, yeah. yeah actually, now I, I mean, think about it from a business point of view, fuck yeah, you do one a month. You do as much as you can, right? <laughs> you just mm-hmm. get it all out there. Um, let me just see, because there's a lot of fucking games in this, uh, a lot of cards already. And I was surprised, like, every time you unlock stuff, it is really cool. And you feel like, oh, this one has a discard synergy, so like, you try and build stuff. Decks as well are only 12 cards. And obviously you start with three, and you draw one each turn. You're drawing, like, nine of 12. So you, basically you get your whole deck every time. Other than oh, that's pretty cool. Bits and yeah, pieces. that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. There is 46, 25, 74. Uh, what's that? That is 99. That is 145 cards in the game total currently get 12 in a deck so that's 12 complete unique decks you could make okay yeah that's not bad is it for yeah. like starting out yeah, yeah exactly uh yeah. and then obviously they'll add more over time of, um, of course they will card games live on a uh, new content constantly constantly yeah. dailies weeklies constant stuff it does seem to be like a drip feed though like the spider-man thing is yeah as i say like three new cards in this or four new cards in this four week span so if that seems to be the way they're doing it it won't be like lots and lots being added in but if they gate them all behind the pass, that might become annoying if you have to pay nine pounds just to get the cards. I'm more thinking as well that six months down the line, if you jump in and it's just like, okay, I missed out on all of the past content. How are they going to do legacy content? So there's probably some ways sure. about how like the, yeah, I spent 18 months on Rune Terror, mate. Trust me. Yeah. You start oh, thinking yeah. about like the, the newbies experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously it's like new, it's in the beta. Uh, it's made by uh, Ben Brode, who uh, was the lead designer on Hearthstone at uh, Blizzard. He left Team 5 about four years ago now uh, to open second breakfast <laughs> studios. And uh, this is their first game. Uh, he knows what he's doing as far as like fun, yeah. quick app-based games. Hearthstone. Oh, I mean, Hearthstone got fucking big for a reason. Hearthstone Classic was very good until it spiraled out of control with insane monetization as well. So hopefully this doesn't get to that level, but probably will. Mm. I mean, uh, it depends fun. how greedy they are. 
Oh, okay. maybe this is like the Blizzard part of it that was agreed. But yeah, cool, yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. Cool. And like, oh, and also like every card has got like six different variant arts as well. And some of them are stupid. Some of them are like super cool comic art. Some of them are like chibi, baby, mm. pixel, like. Yeah, some of the chibi stuff was pretty cool, actually. Yeah, yeah. that's, they're going to, they're going to push the variants. Like if there's a hundred, what do we say? 145 cards and each one's got like four variants and each variant can be upgraded to like the, the 3D and the, the, the thing. So it's, yeah, there's a lot to sink your teeth into. Um, but just the main thing is it's just fun and click a button play there's only one mode and it doesn't even tell you like you've got your rank but it's just you're going up and down there's no like X not number yet. of wins or i've done this or i'm a pro or yeah. no friendly mode or no like friends list like it's very early obviously but uh just fun and yeah it's basically air land and sea but with marble and okay I will avoid it for another few weeks, but we'll probably download Definition. it. Who am I oh kidding? my god, I've played so much yeah. in three days. I <laughs> oh knew that my would god. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it. I've done almost nothing but. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially this one handed, you know, baby in one hand, snap on the other. Just like, yeah, this yep. is parent life. Pooping, working, watching TV. Last night, I was like, going to play Xbox, and instead, I put a uh, match of the day on and just played Marvel Snap all the way through instead. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I've not downloaded it. I knew full well, like, if yeah. that is as good as everyone's making it out to be, that will be my life for a while. Yeah, I recommend finishing Playtale first <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> and then maybe giving it a go. Yeah. Which won't be hard, which won't be hard. I think I think Playtale I'll finish quite quickly. I've yeah, not definitely. enjoyed a single play game like that in a while. I'm really actually having a good time. So. Yeah, definitely. And we'll see what the next uh, seasonal thing is. Like, when the Spider-Man 1 finishes, maybe it's something super cool and then you'll jump in then. <laughs> Ah, oh, they give me a venom one, and I'd be like, okay, fine, <laughs> have have my time. No, uh, one of the one of the character cards on the Miles Morales pass is Carnage. So, oh, you piece of shit! Why would you tell me that? <laughs> Why would you tell me that? <laughs> his, his his card is like amazing as well. How much would I have to play to be able to unlock that? And do I have to pay money for that? See, that's the thing that I think it's only on the pass currently. Yeah, which means I have to pay a turner and level up the pass. Yeah, so this is a problem I find now. Like, Runeterra has been better at doing passes recently. But the downside of having too many passes is it's like if you drop off, jumping back in feels much worse. Leveling so, like, up the pass. Re engagement is much harder to get back. Yeah, leveling up the pass is not a problem. I'm almost level 50 already. After 72 hours of action. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, I dropped the uh, card in WhatsApp if you want to see the base. So that's the base, and then there's one, oh, you know two, I three, do. and there's five <laughs> variants already as well. Pixel, Chibi, Comic, yeah. um, other stuff. So. Yeah, Lo- love me a bit of Cassidy, love me a bit of Carnage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, moving on. Back to you, sir. So on the topic of card games, we play some Magic over the weekend. Play some Commander. Yes. It was actually a good load of fun. It was good fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm really disappointed in my deck, only because I wanted to change the leader. Or the commander, uh, right, yeah. I should say. And then I started thinking about it, and I was like, do I just buy another command to <sighs> p- put in the deck? And then I started Googling up other decks to look into, and I was just like, oh, fuck me. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> He's in. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I, I still look at the Tyranny deck and going, if that wasn't 50 quid, it would have been bought by now. Yeah. It's just asking a little bit too much. But I actually had a load of fun playing Magic again. It was surprisingly fun and fucking stupid. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's a good thing about Commander. Like, it can just be really dumb as fuck. I had some stupid cards. Zach had some stupid cards. You had some stupid mm-hmm. cards. Your deck was so much better than ours, though. Not like better as in like uh, like uh, quality of cards, but better as in like style, thematics. Just, it just looked so good from a Necron deck. It's like yeah, like I don't play too much Warhammer, but when I was playing against a deck and looking at, it, I was like, yeah. This is really fucking consistent with like the black mechanics from Magic, but also like all the Necron side and Resurrection. I was like, this is cool. Yeah, yeah. Mini review. The yeah, the Warhammer 40k Commander decks for Magic seem to be really fucking cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it is exactly what you want as a Necron player in Warhammer. Like it had almost every unit from the book, the, from the books, uh, almost every character. The equipment had like Resurrection Orb, had the Tomes, had like the Catan powers, had the Shard of the Void Dragon, like. And they all do like thematically relevant ish stuff. Yeah. And also, as you say, tied in super with like the black color identity with magic. Uh, all custom art, even cards that are not uh, cards that are reprints of magic cards had Necron specific art 
on them. Yeah, which I thought so was really cool touch. Every card was unique. Yeah. Um, so for, I, I understand why they're, pro- they're it's priced more for like 100 cards with unique, or not 100 cards because the, the the lands, but a lot of unique art uh, and license and stuff. But if you're the just price is probably fun, fair. It, That's the worst it's, part. It's problematic. It's, like yeah. I, I think 40 quid, which is what I got it for, which seems to be 20 quid cheaper than I should have got it for, uh, mm-hmm. is I'm happy ish that i paid that amount but when the regular magic set ones are 20 to 30 sometimes like 17 on sale like it's a tough sell to, for for other people oh yeah like it is very much leaning towards the warhammer fans for this one yeah you know like but uh, it's was, it was cool man it was cool and what else did we play we played quite a lot of games over the weekend in fact too many games <laughs> did you not have anything specifically prepped that you want to talk about i mean like i i was going to talk about hogs of war but oh yeah we've the caveat that uh you know we only played the one game but that one game did take four hours plus set up and put down so just to give game. people an idea and we didn't do all of the stuff we left out some bits that game has a lot more depth than i was expecting but in a good way like we played it for that long and even by the end we're like oh, hang on we never really played around with like the minefields we didn't use half the deployables yeah, like, we never really capitalized on the airships. Like getting the planes up and running, was <laughs> didn't use the airships. No, yeah, we didn't exactly. use the airships at all. Yeah. All the, super, the superstructures. Exactly. So there's a lot of depth in that game if people really want to get into it and really yeah. start actually enjoying it. But as a war game, oh, it's definitely a war game through and through, and mm. it's such a love letter to Hogs of War. Like I can see why they call it a passion project. Like even looking at all the artwork, they've all got little bits of flavor text, which are quotes from the original 2000 game. You know, like even all like the weapons and upgrades, they're all things from the series. I was like, actually, this is game very, very on point. But also, yeah. I actually just felt it was quite a fun war game, even if it was a lot to take in and a lot to learn. And it probably <coughs> wasn't fun for the first hour, hour and a half. I think it got fun when we started getting into like the actual just merging each other and then air, like planes running around, crashing into mountains, you know, like yeah. getting all the tanks out and realizing you've got a flamethrower. And it's like actually setting someone's tank on fire is tank. actually really fun. You know, like yeah. it's really fun setting your tank on fire. Yeah. So I actually had a really good time with it. Um, yeah. I'd definitely if, play if, it again. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you own it, so you probably should. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It was good. It, it just took way too long. I oh, yeah. For like an introduction mission as well, like obviously we're stumbling around for the first half, uh, and then we got into the groove, and by then it's like a lot of stuff you have to keep track of, and yeah, the mm. setup and teardown seemed laborious in ways that I'm very loath to do these days, but I didn't have to do it, so it wasn't that bad. Yeah, um, exactly. I just did it, and yeah, you guys yeah. got lunch, yeah, really. slash had a beer, slash played Marvel Dice Phone for half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. While Chris was setting this game up, we had enough time to play a different game. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Um, it was yeah, it was fun. It was good fun. It's not a three player game. <laughs> oh no, 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 two or four player only. Yeah, like, yeah. If anyone's interested in this, it has to be two or four. Like we had the exact problem. You always getting three player war games. I was in the middle. Sam fucking plonks me with artillery straight away. I tactically retreat into Zach. Me and him have a fight. Both of them come out slightly damaged, but mostly okay. And I'm just limping in the middle. I was like, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to win this. I'm just here to cause carnage slash betray people when they betray me first. <laughs> yeah. That's actually worked in my favour quite well. <laughs> well. It's fucking Zach's fault. I said yeah, I know. Don't kill the cool. dude and we haven't got a problem. So he kills the dude. I'm like, well, okay, now we've yeah. got a problem. <laughs> you know? Doesn't understand the, you have to make the alliance before you can break it <laughs> instead of just <laughs> immediately breaking it before making it. <laughs> He's just like, oh, this artillery is, artillery is going to hurt Sam next turn. But that guy on one health looks really easy to kill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, good fun. Uh, I'm sure that like, the other maps and other missions and that kind of stuff might be quite good. Um, just a lot of bits. I, I think there needs to be an intro mission. Like we we spoke about it quite a lot, the three of us. Yeah, like, there needs to be an intro mission, but I just don't know how you do that without just cherry picking the parts that are fun and then bringing in the other stuff later. Yeah, uh, yeah, or maybe like the first few, like a, a series of levels. Similar to like you know, the, the Command and Conquer, Red Alert. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes you get the missions in the campaign where you don't have a base. And it's like, here's two tanks, here's a plane, here's three guys. Uh, and then go. Like, these That's are the quite a good way of doing that, actually. Yeah, like, here's like, the units you've got. 
Don't do the base building. Off you go. Here's the stuff. Here's how the planes work. Here's how the tanks move. Here's the one which has to pivot, so you have to use action points to move. Here's how this one, blah, 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 blah. Because the first thing you have to do is like, oh, here's a board, like, choose two buildings. I was like, what do you mean? Like, what, is, <laughs> what does each one do? Like, and I'd already I'm... taken away the unit choices. I'd yeah, already yeah. taken away those sort of, like... Yeah, I know. I mean, no, no, not your fault. Like, I'm just saying like that. No, but, the but first thing is like, design, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. It should yeah. be like, because Zach was like, oh, planes seem fun. I'm just going to build a plane. And I was like, well, if you're going to do that, I'm just going to build tanks and, and then we'll just see what happens. And then it turned out planes were quite fun and hard to shoot down and the tanks were quite sturdy and did a lot of damage. And then by halfway through, he had tanks and had planes anyway. So it's all a bit of a mishmash. But yeah, just a level of just like his opposing forces. Here's how everything works. Don't worry about the base stuff. And then add the base stuff afterwards. Might work a bit better. And changing the terrain. I'm basically in a custom build. Oh, yeah. The terrain was level. awful for that layout. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. No, it was great it was for you. Good. Like, it, it was, was good. You had I a mean... fucking clear field path to the, like, the yeah. central objective. I had lakes and mountains yeah. and all sorts in my way. I think by all it was not balanced at all. I basically just walked up to the main base and won. <laughs> <laughs> and the fourth player would have checked you. But without the fourth player to check you, you yeah. just laughed your way into... Well, the game, that's what I mean. The game was fun. Even when I think about it, I did have a good time. It's just, it's a lot to ask for people to play it. Yeah. And it's going to be one of those games that would be more fun the more we played it, which for us and how we play games and where we are in our 30s, just doesn't happen enough. No. You know? yeah, it's you not like we're in a house share and you can just be like, yeah, all right, set up on the table, a few beers on a Monday night, off we, off we go. Yeah, you need a you need a weekly game group to play that, mm-hmm. like with X Wing and Warhammer and that kind of stuff. You need people to play with consistently. Like if it's every other week or every three weeks or whatever, like rotate that in and have a good time. But yeah, once every four months is probably not ideal. No, 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 no. Which sucks for you for next time we do it because uh, Matt, Matt. <laughs> no, um, you and you and Zach are probably going to set up a game group because you live near each other now. So if you just play that a lot, then I don't have to. We can, we can reserve. Mm-hmm. We can reserve when all three of us are together to play the games that I want to play. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's during the other time. You guys can play the games that you want to play with each other. It did work out. Zach didn't want to play any of his own games. He just chose to play yours instead. So yeah, I know. Well, on his rotation, he just picked my games. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, for the exact same reason. He's already played all the games he wants yeah. to play. You know? But then it came to my pick, and I picked your horse racing game. So it was all just. It was all just a good time. Which was a pretty good game as well. Yeah, that was quite fun. That was, that was a pretty good game. It was stupid, but fun. I mean, it's uh, okay for people who don't know. It's called Long Shot, the dice game, and it was one that Shut Up and Sit Down reviewed quite recently. That's why it's gotten from like uh, not okay. really very well known to like top ten on Zatu constantly. So that's the reason that. I ended up buying it. I saw it on Zatu like for two, three weeks in a row. I was like, oh, it's six, mm. it's eight players. Great, I've got six people to play with games with now. I need more games that fit that ca- count. Yeah. And mate, it was pretty fucking fun just betting wildly on horses and buying. It was, yeah. yeah. You can like uh, alter the way that the horses move up and down. Some of them are good. Them Me are good. and you trying to get the fucking number eight over the line. We'll and it. Zach and Vamina are really trying to screw us over. We're like, no, we will get him over the line. But even with both of us spending the whole game focusing on one horse, we managed to get him second, which is a huge win. Like, you. Mm-hmm. Well, you won like him second, like it did help. Oh yeah, I mean you absolutely <laughs> smashed it. Yeah. We we put all our money into the one horse that shouldn't have won, and then Campaign just made it Yeah, this, we will we will make the worst horse win <laughs> enough so that we win. Uh, but even like the way it does, like the buying of the horses, it adds such another lovely little depth because a lot of the game was just camel up. But I think cleaner yeah. with like the roll and white mechanics, making it a lot cleaner. Just white on your board, that's it. Yeah, a bit easier than. Um... Passing around the cards and then hiding them, and with the down, shitty like, pyramid, which I know you love the pyramid. The pyramid's great. The pyramid, the pyramid is like the worst dice invention I've ever seen. Yes, you know it which doesn't fit it in the great. box. It's a pain in the ass to put it, it together. It does fit in the box. It fits in the box. Mm. I mean, maybe if you like your box having a bit of a gap, but you know, I want mine airtight. But it doesn't is... have a gap. It fits in the box perfectly. They designed it so that it fits. I wouldn't know. I sold my couple of cameo the camel exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But, but long shot was cool, man. Actually, that was a really fun game. Yeah, nice. Definitely one that if we do Christmas together and a game is on the cards, we've got like the six of us. That'd probably be one I'd put forward when you've got Hannah there as well, because I think she'd yeah, probably definitely. just enjoy a bit of light gambling. Yeah, yeah always. Because it's just oh, always. Hang on, wait. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you trying to tell us? It's just a, the most approachable <laughs> theme in it. Horses came around a circle. I don't think yeah. it has any real life connotations. I think is uh, no, of course not. More easily palatable. And also, you're just throwing fucking money at your horse. You know, it's like, all right, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually a really good game. It lived up to the hype. Yeah, good fun. Yeah. Uh, so I did Marvel again. <laughs> 
Marvel Dice Throne. I've talked at length on this podcast about how Dice Throne is amazing and good fun. Uh, it's basically Yahtzee with a whole bunch of extra steps, um, but the extra steps make it quite interesting. Uh, it's a really good two-player game, and multiplayer is okay as well. Um, they came out with a big box of Marvel stuff. Um, I, it came, when did it come? About three, four months ago, to be honest. Uh, yeah, so I think it was like August it arrived, like it was yeah. like peak summer. Yeah, and uh, it's the first time I had a chance to like proper dig into it. And uh, yeah, it's really good, and not just a cash grab, which is was similar to like what we were saying about Snap as well. Like It seems like the people... There's enough people that are super passionate about the Marvel stuff that if you give them the license, they actually make good content and don't just actual like, decent games. Like, oh, yeah. Which mean I have to make a fucking Doctor Who elf game or oh, whatever, you know, blah 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 blah. Like this is like, oh man, I fucking love Thor. I'm gonna make it so you can throw a hammer at people, and then the hammer comes back, and you get an electrocution token, and they use a blah blah blah. Like everything is so thematic for the characters. It's got that uh, Roxley Games quality to everything boards, tokens, cards, like everything is just top notch. Um, mm-hmm. Every character's in a separate game tray. All eight are just listed um, listed like horizontally. Uh, vertically in the box, sorry. But vertically, horizontally. They're sideways, but you can pull them upwards. <laughs> They're listed horizontally? But, but, but vert- yeah, but it's more like it's, it's vertical. Okay, okay, you can okay. access all eight, but they're they're on their side. It's like a filing cabinet when you pull out the drawer and you've got all your files lined up horizontally, yeah. but back to back. Yeah. yeah. So it's like that. So you can always grab one. Uh, it's got the ca- character's picture on the side of the box, so you know where each one's lined up. Mm-hmm. Um, if we have got Mars Morales, Spider Man, Captain Marvel, Black Widow, Thor, Scarlet Witch, Loki, Doctor Strange, and a Black Panther. So a good range of characters. And um, yeah, it's just more dice thrown, which is good. New characters and loads of like new ideas and new gameplay stuff as well, which I was surprised about. Um, and they're all very thematic. So had a good time. Oh, it's um, pretty fucking cool. Like. Mm. It is like thematic is the word we're going to keep coming back to for this. Like yeah. even when I was watching you and Zach play the Loki versus Thor fight, it was like you know just listen to two of you being like, okay, yes, I'm going to do this. Ha ha! You know, I've, I'm Loki. I've made an illusion, and you've now missed me for twenty damage. And it's like you know, even just like the conversations you both were having about what you were doing on your turns was all super thematic. And, yeah. Like it was really fucking fun watching actually because of that. Yeah. So every every character has like a has like either a power or a mechanic or a something that like is really 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 like thematic i hate just i'm i don't want to just say thematic all the time but it is i just say like loki like when he he's got an illusion token and when you attack him you like shuffle three cards and you present them to the other person and they have to pick one and if you do the wrong one then it just flies through their ghostly apparition and does no damage um so yeah, I was Thor. Thor's got a huge hammer token, and you throw it at someone, and then that does a damage. And then when you ping it back to yourself, you catch it, and then you get uh, electric kinesis. And as that builds up, you can then unleash like attacks using that as well. Um, and in like true, as you said, yeah, in true like movie fashion, I was like one hit away, and I was like super confident. I was like overconfident. Thor, ha ha, threw a hammer at him, <laughs> hit an illusion, didn't do any damage twice in a row. When only one of the three cards does no damage, so I hit that one twice, uh, and he like just stabbed me to win. <laughs> and I was like, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you, Loki. I, I think it was a moment where you threw the hammer, you missed him, you hit his illusion, got the fail, got the thirty three percent fail, which then lost you the game, and it was just like. That moment of like through the hammer, hit the illusion. Loki turns up behind him, slit. GG. Yep. You know, it was like okay, that's pretty fucking cool, and so in line with how that fight would go if Loki won. Yep. Yeah, so annoying. <laughs> um, yeah. Black Widow obviously is a human. She's got loads of uh, upgrades and gear. Um, she's got uh, a card to upgrade all of her powers, and almost everything is like ways to fish through your deck to then get those upgrades. She can plant time bombs on people. That tick down, and if they fail rolls and they blow up after two turns. Um, Scarlet Witches is quite cool. She's got like the dark hold stuff, so it's proper evil Scarlet Witch. She's got a cool power where uh, on the opponent's turn, you swap out one of their dice for one of your dice. And a lot of dice thrown is obviously each face on the dice has a symbol, and they're trying to match up symbols to powers on their board. So we're giving them a dice that doesn't have any of their symbols on it at all. So it basically turns it into just a number. So they can get low straight and high straight, but they can't really get anything else. And uh, some of the powers require five dice or four dice. But exactly, you like, took away the artsy. Some of them are sixes. Take, yep. Yeah, you take away the artsy, you take away the sixes. Um, it just is fun. <laughs> you can mm-hmm. do it like almost every time. I mean, it's absolute bullshit, but proper in line with Scarlet Witch. Yes. Yeah. She's OP as hell. 
Oh, so. yeah, she can conjure stuff, prob- probability manipulation, all that kind of stuff. Uh, whereas Doctor Strange has a book of spells. Um, you find the cards, you prepare them into a book, like the preparing step, the blah, 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 blah. And then they've got a prepare effect, which is when you put them down, and then you've got a cast effect, which means you get to the cast, and you can cast any spell in your in your book that you prepared. So you can you know plan ahead for a couple of turns and then smash down what you need to do. Uh, he's got the time stone. His fucking, one of his powers is just... Just do the whole phase again. Just, like, just put it, nothing happened. Fuck it. Absolutely nothing happened. What do you mean I missed? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Again and again and again. Uh, Captain Marvel is just punchy, which is fun. I mean, I, I know that Captain Marvel is just punchy. It's so boring from a game design point of view. Yeah. And like, it's, 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 it's good, what I, I had like... in Marvel Legend. Uh, you know, was it Legendaries? The other collectible card game, living card game they did? Champions. Thank you, Marvel Champions. Yeah, and when you're playing in a, as her and that, it's just like, punchy, punchy. Ooh, hang on. Punchy, punchy more. Yeah. It was, yeah. Like, yeah. There was a cool bit where I had like, I'd fully stacked cosmic flares on him and then I did a bower roll into a cosmic raid in a light beam. And I was like, ah, oh, this is just, I, did, I did a, actually did a bower roll into a special, into a mm-hmm. souped up special and blasted him off the board. I mean, so that was cool. Pretty, it's pretty cool. It's pretty yeah. cool. Uh, and then uh, Black Panther, he's got the like the kinetic suit. So every time he takes damage, like you stack up the br- 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 kinetic, and then you can blast it all out at once. Uh, and then Spider Man's got like uh, he's the Miles Morales stuff, so he's got the Venom Strike and the invisibility and all that kind of stuff. So good fun. Um, it's pretty expensive for the whole big box. Uh, I backed it on Kickstarter, obviously, so I got it a bit of a discount. They, I think they said they are going to do like the two player packs, so you'll get one with like. You know, Loki and Thor will probably come together and that kind of stuff, which will be a much more Doctor palatable. Strange, uh, Scarlet Witch, yeah, yeah, they'll be a much more palatable, like tw- probably about twenty five quid, um, that kind of stuff. Which, considering um, the amount of R and D that's gone into them, and like the fact it is a bit of a love letter, like when we were talking about like the design is clearly loving the Marvel IP. That game is just a bit of a love letter <coughs> in itself. Which, yeah, you know, definitely. Uh, on the store, they've only got the big box is ninety six pounds currently, but for all eight heroes, that's what, like £12? I think. If they come in 25 quid for two, I mean, more or less going to be... Like, the big box yeah, was cool, exactly. though. Like, the big credit credit is due. The big box was cool. It was really well designed, and, like, just the thought process behind the entire box, you know, they clearly planned it out. And I was like, I like that. Yeah. Everything yeah. Roxley Games is generally very high quality when it comes to production and uh, the, the trays and inserts and components and everything. Um, yeah, like the, the brass remakes were both the same just like super high quality and every dice throne thing is the same like really high really good stuff so yeah that's it good fun and uh yeah marvel into marvel unfortunately i was gonna talk a little bit about the magic as well but like you did that so hey <laughs> it was worth talking about as well talking, yeah, talking about it was worth talking about. yeah i mean like was there any other games that were on our uh our played list i mean we played a bit of flam rouge do it still a good game Still Rouge, Flam Rouge. Rouge. yeah, it's still a fun game. No, I know it's a bit dated, but it's actually still really fun. Yeah, there's a reason like, like those classic games are still popular and still so well. Like Flam Rouge is just fun, and it's more fun with more people, which is oh, 100%. unfortunate. But... Playing with four players, like that's the first time we played it at four. Yeah, and it was quite interesting watching the way the pack dynamic worked. Where in yeah. three player, it's almost like you shift whoever's up front, but in four player, you get the fucking roadblocks, <laughs> and it's like, well, I want to overtake. But I missed my opportunity to overtake because yeah. I'm now stuck at the bottom of the mountain because these you know. fucks across the road can't get past, and then there's a lot of slipstreaming yeah. because there's so many cyclists on the road, and uh, yeah, it, and then and then your relay runs off and wins the race. And you're like, calm down, yeah. mate. Yeah. What school did you go to? You know, my sprint is absolutely knackered, and my relay <laughs> wins by about ten squares somehow. <laughs> that was good. That was uh, good. Fun. Uh, Even I didn't right. expect that. I knew what I was doing that turn, the turn where it turned. Like I knew I was like I was trying to get one of them ahead. And then when I realized it was my relay, I was like, uh oh. And then I apparently planned it really well when nobody could catch him. It was great. No. <laughs> no. I, I took I took second place. Which I uh, took second place. I, no, it's not how this works. You win as a team. You win as a team. Your team came I first. I game one and two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Know, that was pretty it. good. Yeah. It's good fun. Um yeah. I mean, we played the Hidden Should Leaders. We... I'll be honest, I don't remember too much about Hidden Leaders. I kind of... No, I think we needed to play it a couple more times. Yeah, um, I think so as well. So I don't to know get what the, Yeah, to get the swingy, the mechanics, the back and forth. It's a lot of um, give and take. But three of us all had the same faction, which I think kind of warped it a little bit because we were all doing the same thing, hidden, hiddenly. 
we were all just playing the black objective. Yeah. And all exactly. of our men, who's the only person who wasn't. So. Yeah. <laughs> so it was never going to win. Um, no. No, we played Parks. Yeah, Parks is all right. I think Parks I've all right. talked about it before. Yeah. Just a nice low key yeah. walk through a park. No, not antagonistic, not. <laughs> no, I don't really. It's just good art, fun, light hearted thingy. No, it's just blocking people on the trail. It's like, oh, do you want to stop at this mountain? I like how I imagined it. You know, yeah, when like, you do the trail you. part and you get blocked. Yeah. That's somebody just sitting there greedily at the top, taking like a million photos. <laughs> and you're like, come on, man, stop taking photos of the beautiful view. And it's just like, oh, no. you know, off, off you go. I want to see the view, damn it. Yeah. But that was all right, actually. I don't know if that plays better at two than it would at four. I get the feeling it does. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think it's better at. I mean, when me and Hannah played, it's definitely a lot quicker at two. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. That's the only thing I would say. At downtime at four was a little bit higher. There were definitely times where I was just like, do, 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 do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess most games you're kind of waiting for your turn unless they've added in some sort of alternate play thing. But Yeah, but um, it depends when you're waiting your turn and it's exciting or when you're waiting for your turn and everyone's just picking an action space. It's not the most exciting yeah. when it's like, oh, congrats on picking up a token. Yeah. Congrats on you picking up a token. And you can't plan ahead because the person immediately before you might go on the space you want. So yeah. you might as well just wait until your turn. And there wasn't much RNG in that sense. It was just like, well, if they want to fuck me, pff, yeah. there's not much I can do about it. Yeah. So it's yeah, like, it was all right. Yeah, it's a bit like Tokaido, but American National Park. Yes, instead that's of a really Japan. good shout. <laughs> yeah, a lot more like interesting than Tokaido. But no, you to that same kind. Oh yeah, I think Park's got a lot more going for it. Mm. But Tokaido is very much f- kind of, it's not roll and move, but it kind of feels like it. It's just like, yeah, I'm just going to move and get the reward. It's basically the same game, <laughs> just with a few uh, different elements. But the the trail thing is pretty much the same. Yeah, you know, I think uh, you're right about the trail. Yeah. And, uh, cool. Yeah. So, should we leave it there? So, well, instead of uh, doing two words on every game, every other game, we played a whole bunch more. Uh, we were never going to talk about those games again. Like that, that, <laughs> that, 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 that's exactly why I did it. I knew we weren't going to talk about them again. Yeah. Yep. So two weeks, we got Chris is going to have finished uh, his game. Plague Tale, probably. Outside of like, you know, Emma's birthday in the middle, which you know. Uh, so maybe Cut not. into my gaming time. No, <laughs> but seriously. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I'm going to try and get it finished. Like, it's really good. Really yeah. good. God yeah. of War will be out. Whether we have impressions on it or not, I do not know. Maybe mm. not. I, I'm still torn about buying the PS4 version. Because oh really? That's that's the position I mean. Oh, I'm, you don't have a PS5, do you? Oh, okay. No, I, I know that's the problem I've got. Uh, so even if we do a console share, we're both playing on PS4 to get the half price game, or you're playing on PS5 and I'm playing on PS4, which now throws us into a financial situation, which we should probably discuss not right now. <laughs> no, uh, I was gonna buy it physical, try and complete it in two days and sell it. <laughs> 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 That's a really good idea. That's so I much cheaper. That? That's so yeah, that's such a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I'll just fucking buy it on the PS4 then. Xbox, digital all the way. PlayStation, I really don't want to give you 70 quid for your cinematic game I'll play once. Like, I'm going to rent, but I don't have a way to rent, so I'm going to buy it and sell it. I think. That's if I even want to play it. I, I'm not entirely sorry. I, I do want to play it. I know I want to play it. They've, have, you, have you listened to many news or podcasts on the stuff yet? What they... They've they've basically unembargoed the first like six hours or so, but only specific stuff. So the only bits that people can talk about seem to be all of the bits which are essentially God of War twenty eighteen. Like the areas are the same. There's a lake. There's boats. The combat's the same. And it and everyone say it's like basically like one of those you know it's like a PS two era sequel. It's just the same game. But then so all, them, but then all of them say, a, yeah. but there's a tinge uh, on on the Wayfair um, Wayfair. Way no, not waypoint. Uh, Next lander podcast. They were constantly made like of the stuff we can talk about. Like obviously there was a tinge of like okay maybe something changes about six hours in or like something happens or like some storyline or maybe you go somewhere else. But the stuff they could talk about was just exactly it was just twenty eighteen. Like but like it, even like the skill trees the same. You still got Mamiya on your belt quipping as you walk around. Uh, Atreus is still firing bow and arrow. Like it just seems more of the same with a tinge of there's probably more guys but for some reason they've not let us talk about it yet it's like well why let people talk about the 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 boring worry that everyone had that it was just more of the same but not the interesting stuff at least like 
either don't and wait until you you're happy unveiling everything or i don't know it just seems like a weird take but then then maybe there is something that happens okay this is speculation territory no but that's but what i mean might. i think, Why that, I, think you do that? I think there is but everyone is like all at the same time everyone's like oh cool we can talk about god of war it's the same as 2018 like nothing has changed the gameplay is like the same uh but you know wink wink we'll have more to say nudge nudge in a couple of weeks wink nudge maybe yeah and it's like oh, all of the previews are just yeah it's more of the same because doesn't 2018 <laughs> end okay spoiler alert for a four-year-old game spoilers, spoilers. but didn't it end with your son finding out about his heritage and it's yes. almost that moment where he wants to go to Jotunheim. so it makes sense to an extent that you stay in the same world because it's just another extension of kind of well, the realms you're yeah. already at it's, I mean, it's definitely so, that. But then how do they then convert that? That's probably the six-hour point we're talking about. Like, <laughs> you're, right, you're right, isn't it? Like, Yeah. But then why let people talk about the, the bit which everyone worried about, which is just that it's just the same game with the same combat, with the same skill tree. Or maybe just softening expectations in general because they're like, shit, this isn't as good as we want it to be. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. It's, and uh, they have said this is definitely the last one uh, of this storyline. Uh, they're only doing one, well, more, one more Norse one. So there may be more, obviously. Kratos goes on. People love God of War. Um, but this is the the whole Norse thing. They wanted to wrap it all up in one big game. He's got the Egyptian gods to kill, you know. Yeah, that seems loads to be of other, like, You can go down like the Celtic and Gaelic route. There's so many other like mythos you can send yeah. him. People's next best guess is the Egyptian ones, because why not? Yeah. After Greeks and Romans, they're probably the most well-known. Rah! See, that was both an exclamation and a god. <laughs> <laughs> you suck so much <laughs> uh, you didn't deserve a laugh at me then but it caught me hey. off guard yeah, yeah that was good right uh, that's gonna do it hopefully we'll have stuff to talk about next time well, we definitely will 100% oh 100% yeah, yeah. 100%. whether it's just more Marvel or Sam but you know yeah not my fault um, <laughs> entirely my fault that's it if you got a question that you want to ask us on the show i've just remembered somebody sent us a question to talk about on the show oh did they <laughs> yeah did they how quick yeah. is the question is this like we haven't done no, a question no, no, in no. Weeks. We, we need to we need to prep it it's um we'll, we'll discuss it offline but uh sorry to the person that sent that in you know who you are we will discuss that next time 100 percent. i tried whoever it was yeah uh, I, I i mean it was like nine days ago so i forgot until right the second i'm sorry oh, i remember the question i forgot about it as well yeah, yeah, yeah. the same group chat so if you want to send a question that we will maybe maybe or maybe not do contact downtime gaming at gmail.com uh, downtime underscore gaming on twitter and instagram maybe on twitter for now we'll see what elon decides to do with it now he's bought it um, <laughs> let everyone call each other the n-word about 550 percent 550 percent increase in the use of the n-word mm-hmm. in one day after elon mm-hmm. uh, apparently quote freed the bird uh so everyone uh start thinking about what social media network you can use from now on that's not Twitter. any suggestions let us know any because you know yeah not true social um but that is it we'll see you guys at the same time in a couple of weeks stay safe out there have a great week it's been a pleasure take it easy Thank you.